uh, ambulance emergency. Tell me exactly what's happening. Alright, listen, I'm organising help for you now. Stay on the line, I'll tell you exactly what to do next. I can't see it anymore. Do not go into the water. With unprecedented access to the heart of New South Wales Ambulance Control Centre... Listen carefully and I'll tell you how to do resuscitation, OK? Tonight, we capture the moment the call comes in... You put someone sober on the phone? ..and the ambulance is dispatched... We're four minutes now. ..to the paramedics on the front line. He yeah. looks like he's deteriorated. ..covering five ambulance superstations across the entire metropolitan area where every responder fights to save lives. They don't have minutes. This is seconds. How are you? Good. Good. What's going on? All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to job number one. I hope everyone's feeling fresh. It's Good Friday, and almost 200 paramedic teams are spread across New South Wales. All right, let's do this. It's another day in the Southwest. As the day shift begins at Sydney's control centre... Happy Easter, people. Happy Easter. You know what my bunny is? The call takers and dispatchers stock up for the big weekend. These are emergency eggs. Would you like a Turkish delight Easter egg? No, thank you very much. Okay. can pick those. This is the thing, so many people hate Turkish delight. Like, I'm not offering, because people just tell, oh. give me filthy looks. Like, Turkish delight! <laughs> so I'm like, OK, I'll keep them for myself. Everyone needs a sweet treat on a day shift, you know? Today, between three and 5,000 triple zero calls will be answered. So he's going in and out of consciousness, is he? Yes, he is, Alan. Do you know what day it is today? Good Friday. Correct, Good Friday. <laughs> The start of the Easter long weekend has already seen an increase in recreational accidents. Uh, my friend has gone out on a boat and it's capsized and he cannot swim, but he's drowning. I was walking through the water and I felt something to my foot. I just felt that stuff Intoxicated patients. Do you know how much food had to drink? Uh, too much. OK. As well as a surge in motor vehicle accidents. In the past six years, the holiday weekend has seen a steady rise in fatalities. There's a ten and nine being hit on the road. Okay. I can feel it injured. Okay, but he's got a, a pedestrian has been hit by a car. He has been hit by a car and he's lying on the road on the jetty road. Okay. Was he on a push bike at all? Yes, he was on a push bike. Okay. Each year, New South Wales Ambulance responds to almost 2,300 cyclists injured on the state's roads. OK, are there any obvious injuries? There's a lot of injuries. He's starting in a very bad state. If he's bleeding heavily, he's starting his back. Duty Operations Manager Joe is dispatched immediately from Liverpool Superstation. As a dom, we respond to the biggest emergencies. My role is to make sure that my team have all the resources to ensure that the patient is getting the highest quality care. Vehicle versus pedestrian, Lappington, have 832 responding from Lappington as well. Inspector 84, cop that report. Thanks. Uh, my ETA should be uh, just under 10. Due to the severity of the injuries, multiple ambulances are also dispatched. Car 832 is two minutes from the scene. A medical team with a doctor is also on approach. And in car 884, intensive care paramedic Haley and partner Jazz are 15 minutes away. Got everyone going. Gang's back together. <laughs> Gang's all here. Ever since I started in this job, my dream was to become an intensive care paramedic. I've put so much training and blood, sweat and tears into this role. I really like going to critical cases because they can be the most rewarding and they are the most challenging for me as a clinician. 
car 832 is now at the scene with the patient. Two things. Uh, 41 year old man riding a bicycle truck up at speed. He's got a severe injury to his right arm with an active bleeding at his face, which we're trying to control. Okay, so we've got a severe arm injury. So it could be like an arterial bleed depending on what it is. Pedestrians or cyclists hit by cars at high speed. They are vulnerable people. They've got minimal personal protective equipment on them and they have a high likelihood of severe injury and death. Here we go. You can see the debris here on the road as well, you know. Hey mate, my name's Joe, one of the paramedic specialists that's gonna help you today, all right? Yeah, What's his name? Yeah. What was your name, my friend? Kevin. Kevin, you, yeah, tell me what Hey, Kevin. Doing, it's got a decent amount of blood loss, eh? Hey? Yeah, it is. Yeah, definitely. The paramedics from car 832 were the first on scene and have placed a tourniquet around Kevin's right arm to stem the blood loss from his deep laceration. Where's the worst of your pain, Kevin? Your arm and your hip, okay. It's got significant chest trauma as well, man. Yeah. Inspector 84, Sydney. Inspector 84, go ahead. Yeah, Inspector 84, thanks. Uh, we've got one male patient. He does have significant bleeding to that right arm. He's got potential chest and pelvic injuries as well. I'll keep the medical resource running and I'll keep my IC resource running as well. With the medical team still en route, Jazz and Haley arrive at the scene. It doesn't look good. I'm going to count on three, and we're going to roll, OK? All right, guys, one, two. Just protect that arm. You're right, Kev. You're right, buddy. You're right. You're doing well. You're doing really well. We're going to give you some medicine to help with your pain in a moment as well, mate, OK? Hello, legend. How are you going? Let me give you a rundown. They're wrapping his pelvis because he's also got some chest injuries that we saw here on exposure, right? Sorry, mate. Sorry, matey. So massive hemorrhage is sorted, airways Massive hemorrhage is sorted, airways okay, breathing's okay. We've got chest and pelvic injuries as well as back pain and that laceration to the arm. I've got the medical team still coming, yeah? Yeah. Kevin, it's so nice to meet you. I'm Hayley. Hayley's another All right, let's get him over. On three, one, two, three. Pedestrians and cyclists have a lot of injuries that we can see. I don't worry about those injuries as much. I worry about the injuries that I can't see. Take a breath from me, mate. It's got reduced lung sounds. You do have reduced lung sounds? A little bit. On the Right side is reduced. I'm down, I'm down. Joe, subcutaneous emphysema, left side. OK. Traumatic subcutaneous emphysema occurs when air is trapped in the tissue under the skin, and it can be fatal. He's probably got a collapsed right lung. Oh. Yes, mate, we know. We know. Yeah. Got a doctor on the way, OK? Yeah. Now, it's gone from he's really sick to, man, this is super life-threatening. We need to do something about this, and we need to do it pretty quickly. Take a breath from me, mate. Paramedics, including duty operations manager Joe and intensive care paramedic Haley with partner Jazz, are attending to a seriously injured cyclist hit by a car in Sydney's southwest. Kevin has a deep laceration to his arm, as well as a suspected collapsed lung. It's got reduced lung sounds. You do have reduced lung sounds? A little bit. Pneumothorax. He's probably got a collapsed right lung. A pneumothorax, or collapsed lung, occurs when air leaks into the space between the lungs and chest wall, putting pressure on other vital organs, including the heart. It's a life-threatening scenario. The patient could essentially go into cardiac arrest. I have to be super focused so I can deliver the best chance for that patient. So he's got reduced air entry on the right side. Let's get some O2 on him and let's get some fentanyl drawn up. I'll drop some fentanyl. Yeah, thank you. 
Kevin is given the opioid fentanyl for his severe pain. How far away is mental? I'll get you an ATA. The medical team with the doctor is still en route. Hey, Inspector A4, just a quick ETA for our medical team, please. We're on route right now, so hopefully it's going to be here. Amazing, thanks so much. Nice work, team. Let's try and Let's get start moving. rolling. Yeah. yeah. Toby, you all right? Toby, you all right? We're going to look after him, mate. Look after him. Who's he, mate, to you? He... He's one of my best mates. His yeah, wife right. just called me. OK, all right, mate. You all right, Kevy? So, let his wife know that we're going to take him up to Liverpool, Liverpool? Hospital, okay. mate. Yeah, he's, he's pretty injured, hey? Like, he's got a pretty big cut on his arm. He's got a collapsed right lung. He broke that right. not long ago. He punctured his lung in a crash... Yeah, OK. ..two and a half years ago. OK. Buddy, I'll get in touch yeah, with Kelly. Yeah? He's got a history of a collapsed lung from an MVA previously oh, on the as right well. Side. Okay. Likely on the right side. Yeah. 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 Medical teams. Yeah. Hello. So we've got Kevin, 41 year old. He was travelling on a pushy. My primary concern is his respiration. So he's got subcutaneous emphysema on the right hand side. He has a history of pneumothoracy on the same side. He's got very, very deep, which I haven't cited, venous lack on the right arm with some hemorrhaging. As I said, I'm concerned about the breathing. Right, I, uh, yeah, yeah, you can take over. Okay. Kevin, we're going to get you in. We're going to start getting you to hospital. We need to do a scan of your chest and your abdomen on the way, OK? And get your pain under control, OK? The doctor is equipped with a portable ultrasound that can monitor Kevin's suspected internal injuries. He looks like he's deteriorated. They're going a little bit quiet and yeah, pale. Like pale. Pale. Happy to roll? You to go on the front. Thank you. What's our ETA? 15. OK, well, thank you. Patients loaded into 884 with the medical team on board. They're going to be heading up to Liverpool. He's far from in the clear. Like, he's got a right collapsed lung. He's got pelvic injuries. He's got back injuries. He's got a pretty significant laceration to that right arm. Uh, they're life-threatening injuries. It's going to give you some more pain relief, Kevin, OK? All right, mate. His lung being collapsed, the chest starts to fill up with air, starts putting pressure on the heart, and when it starts putting pressure on the heart, it restricts the heart from being able to beat. Ultimately, he could stop breathing, and his heart could go to cardiac arrest. We may stop at any time on the way to hospital, pull him out, and have to do some, some other procedures to relieve his lung collapse. The other procedures could include making a small incision in Kevin's chest wall to remove the excess air. Obs are all like, sort of OK enough at the moment, but we're obviously watching that downward trend. Yeah. If anything changes, yeah. we'll just call out, we'll pull over, pull, over. pull okay. him out, and we'll go from there, OK, if we have to do any procedures. Everyone's yeah, happy absolutely. with that? Yeah, yeah. sounds like a good plan. Yeah. The paramedics are still several minutes away from the hospital. You're doing well, Kevin. Just having a look in your eyes, buddy. You got kids? I heard you got a baby. Two. Two kids. How old's the baby? Oh, wow. What are your baby's names? I've got Patrick, my baby. Patrick, yeah? And Jim, my big one. Oh, wow. How old's the big one? Did you say four? Oh, let wow. I've got a nine-year-old. It can be intimidating to have a rapidly deteriorating patient on your ambulance. You've got someone's life in your hands, someone's loved one, and you feel a little bit helpless because ultimately they need to get themselves into a theatre. From a breathing point of view, he has got right side of chest to say, with rib fractures, subcutaneous emphysema, pneumothorax. Um, however, he is maintaining good stats. Yeah. So from that point of view, I'm happy we don't need to intervene at this precise moment. number out of ten. Down to a four. Because we can give you more pain relief. There's no problem. Are you sure? 
You're going to be the best patient ever. If this is me, just um, just give me all of the pain relief. Yeah, yeah, give you everything. Everything that we've got lined up. We go to people on the worst days of their life. Over the years, I've had a number of people that I've been lucky enough to save their life, and that's the most rewarding thing for me in this job. I'm so proud that the teamwork that my team, the paramedics, the medical team gave this person was exceptional. All right to go? Yeah. Team. Yes. You're a queen. Yes. Check me out. Yes. You're amazing. Thank Betty, you. you're a legend. See ya. <laughs> On Good Friday, and Haverfield paramedics Keely and Ash have just completed a patient transfer to hospital. <laughs> oh my god, you look so funny. <laughs> Are you in so much pain right now? Look, some people have to. Commitment. Com I'm committed to this job. It's Keely's first day back after having her wisdom teeth removed. I can't get over it. I'm trying to think of what you look like. <laughs> I think it's time to take this off. I've had it on for 20 minutes now. It has gone down. It has it? Yeah. Maybe I should do it just to get rid of some of my swelling. <laughs> All right, I need a coffee. It's going to be a Q word day, not going to be B word. What's the B word? I'll tell you, it, it, it sounds like Izzy. <laughs> I've been a paramedic for four years now. This job is my identity. Like, it's not just a job, it's a dream. Hello, Baba. Good morning. Being a working mum and being a paramedic has its ups and downs. No cheeky muffin. Mm, yum. My family, they're everything, because they've allowed me to be who I need to be and want to be. Okay. See you soon. I hope when she grows up and she can have an emotion of what my job is, I hope she's really proud of me. Ambulance emergency, tell me exactly what happened. I can't breathe. I've got COPD. And my oxygen has dropped below 70%. A healthy blood oxygen level is around 95%. Anything lower than 88% can be life-threatening. Are you home by yourself? Look. City to 655. 655, copy. Right, so we've got a 69-year-old female with COPD, can't breathe, gasping. COPD, or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, is the fifth leading cause of death in Australia. It's an incurable disease that worsens over time and causes the airways in the lungs to narrow, making it difficult to breathe. So we just got to control that airway quick as possible. We'll get, we'll get such probe on straight away. We want to know how their oxygen's going. Yeah. I'm really good. Right, ambulance has been organised. We have help coming out to lights and sirens as quickly as we can. I'm going to stay on the line with you as long as I can. I can hear how difficult your breathing is. Well, perhaps now, okay. just sit and breathe. Okay. Clearly. Keely and Ash are five minutes away. An intensive care paramedic team has also been dispatched. This is a time critical job. When somebody's not breathing properly, their heart's not getting enough oxygen, their brain's not getting enough oxygen, they can go into cardiac arrest. Time is life saving when it comes to breathing difficulties. Oh no, one, five, six, so here. Yep, this one. You got your radio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll confirm it. Two.
Ambulance. Hi, my name's Ash. What's your name? Lynn. Lynn, when did this start? Wednesday night. Wednesday night, it's been like this. Has it gotten any better? No, this morning, is it worse? Yeah, okay. What were you doing this morning when it started like this? Woke up. You just woke up like this? Yeah. Her body is thinking I'm running a marathon and I'm going to pass out and I need oxygen now. Have you had a cough recently? Yes. Yeah, how long has your cough been around for? Wednesday. Since Wednesday as well, okay. With a COPD patient who has been exacerbated, they are highly susceptible to picking up infections. So my main concern is how much oxygen are they taking in? Let me have a quick listen to your lungs and then we'll gonna give you some oxygen, okay? Because you're really quite low at the moment. She is 28 sats, 130 for a heart rate. Lynn's blood oxygen level is critically low. Their brain is starting to starve. That means they don't have minutes. This is seconds. She might not make it to hospital. Let me have a quick listen to your lungs and then we'll gonna give you some oxygen, okay? Because you're really quite low at the moment. Paramedics Keely and Ash are treating Lynn, a patient with COPD struggling to breathe. Let me just see if she's got a wheeze. I can hear something at the moment. Her blood oxygen level is critically low. But before Ash can give her a new supply of oxygen, she needs to find the source of Lynn's sudden decline. You've got an infection in your chest, it sounds like, OK? You've got a bit of a, what we can hear is a wheeze. I'm going to give you a nebulizer, OK? And you're going to have some, um, like, just like a Ventolin puffer, OK, put in. Have you ever had that before? Yeah. yeah. Keely here, she's going to put that mask over you to help you with your breathing. Go around your face, OK? A nebulizer with medications is used to open Lynn's airway as well as break down the fluid in her lungs. Hopefully this will be enough to help you with your breathing, OK? This is going to open up that airway a little bit and make you feel a bit better, all right? If this patient doesn't respond well to my oxygen, she will not have enough oxygen in her brain and in her heart to survive. So your oxygen's already getting much better, OK? It's come back up. Good news, all right? I think you just have infection in your lungs, Lynn. Hey, guys, how are you? Intensive care paramedics arrive to supervise Lynn's critical condition. So this is Lynn. She was obviously struggling to breathe when we arrived. I could hear an audible wheeze. When we came in, she was a 28 for SAT. She was 135 for her heart rate. We put her on six litres with five milligrams of salbutamol and it's brought it up to 92. So I'm pretty happy with that. After inhaling fresh oxygen plus Ventolin, Lynn's blood oxygen level is now a less dangerous 92%. Now, Lynn, you don't have to say a whole lot, but you were pretty bad when they got here. Would you say that you feel better, same, or worse? A bit better. Okay. All right. Have you ever been into yeah, ICU with your... Yeah, OK. When was that, Lynn? Was that recently you were in ICU? 2018. OK. Can you get moving? I think she had about five to ten minutes left in her. It could have ended dire. We were really lucky we were only just around the corner. We could get there quickly. OK, Lynn, very important that you're not going to try and exert yourself too much, all right? All we need you to do is make the way onto this chair. That's it. Just turn towards me, Jalim. That's it. Well done. OK. The moments I love the most in this job is when 
I've improved someone's outcome. I've made them feel better. They're the proud moments for me. All right, Lynn, give yourself a cuddle, okay? No grabbing anything, all right, John? COPD is something that doesn't just go. You can be treated for it or under treatment for it, but once you diagnose, it's with you for life. Thank you. She was going to drop if we hadn't been there soon. And she would have run out of bed. Are you feeling better, Lynn? You're looking better. Lynn, what time did you wake up this morning? Seven. And was it straight away like this, or were you able to get some breakfast into and it got worse? No. And then what did you do? Because you didn't call us straight away. Did you just try and hopefully, hoping it would go? OK. She's been down this route so many times, and she just doesn't seem like the person that wants to annoy the system. And she's been trying to put up with it. Next time, you need to call us straight away, OK? You just need to call an ambulance. You'll die at home. You have to go. It's life and death, and we're there for life and death. We are an emergency service. Just give us a call. And if you don't know, just give us a call anyway. Like, let us make the decision. We know whether you need to go or not. All right, Lind, you've been to the resus before, haven't you? Yeah. You're going to see the doctors? and they're going to just start the treatment from there, all right? You right for me to pull them? Yeah, let's go, should pull them. Hey, Lynn. I get really proud of those moments because I walk away and I know I saved that one person's life. I hope my daughter looks at me and goes, my mum saves lives, that's what she does. Is the whole room doing the majority of people doing kitchen chips? I'm not even hungry. It's lunch on the run in Sydney's control centre, and today is Good Friday, so fish and chips is on the menu. Can't go wrong with some potato scallops. Do love potatoes. Potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. Oh. Keep that towel and keep that pressure on the wound, OK? Since the start of today's shift, call takers have answered 500 triple zero calls for help. Listen carefully. We need to lay her flat on her back and remove anything under her head. Is he still bleeding from his mouth? Yes, correct. The start of the school holidays often results in an increase of calls from children. Ambulance emergency, what town or suburb? Do you know where you are? They're in the pool, but it hasn't much. All right. How old is the patient? She's um, five. Five? OK. Yeah. Is she awake? She's asleep. OK. Is she breathing? No. Caretaker Bronte is speaking with a young child claiming a five-year-old is stuck in mud and not responsive at a public swimming pool. Are there any adults around? No, it's just me and my cousin. Your cousin? Don't press any buttons on the phone so I can hear you. Stay on the line, OK? Don't hang up. Um, saying it's a really young caller, like a three-year-old, saying someone's stuck in a pool of mud. I said, are they awake or asleep? He said, they're asleep. Um, and she's not breathing. Hello. 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 Where are you, darling? I'm at the pools. You're at the pools. What pools are you at? 
New South Wales. OK. Uh, is there an adult there with you? Hello, that's my cousin. How old is your cousin? He is, um... He's 17. He's 17. OK, can you put him on the phone for me, please? Hello. OK, do you require an ambulance there? What? Do you require an ambulance? Is somebody hurt? My um, cousin, my cousin made a funny sound. <laughs> OK, you do realise, you do realise that this is an emergency line and you're stopping people getting through that are sick? Now, do you require an ambulance? Yes. OK, so you need to tell me where you are. I like the pools. What pools? <laughs> While there is suspicion of a hoax, Bronte and Supervisor Sue must treat all triple zero calls seriously. OK, this is not funny. Do you require an ambulance? Yes. Well, we can't help you if we don't know where you are. Well, uh, you're in St Mary's. OK, so if you're at the pools in St Mary's, there should be some lifeguards there. So I need you to go and get me a lifeguard, please. But I can't, because they're off duty. No, there's never a... No, they're not. I know where the pools are in St Mary's, and I know that there's lifeguards there all the time. So you need to go and get me a lifeguard, please. They can't, because that's the person that's stuck in the mud. What? The adult? The lifeguard? OK. I don't think you're being completely honest to me, are you? I'm being honest. There's no mud at the pools in St Mary's. It's a pool. What? There's no mud at St Mary's. It's a pool. Sorry. All right. Well, I, I think that you, you're having a joke and I think that you're being funny. You think you're being funny, but you're not. So this is an emergency line and we're now going to disconnect the call. So please... Don't call unless you're sick or someone's really hurt and you need help, OK? OK, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you could tell it was a hoax, but, like, if they keep saying over and over again I don't to, do you need an ambulance, and they say yes, then you can't hang up. Just like say like... hoax call. Yeah, per CTL. Yep. School holidays. School holidays. <laughs> New South Wales Ambulance receives more than 100 hoax calls every month. That was the whole 15 minutes that we were on the phone and there could have been other people waiting to come through to triple zero. Say if there was someone else waiting and they're, like, not awake, not breathing, it's not good. Emergency for me, exactly what's happened. Look, the guy was having a stroke. He wasn't coming to him. He's sitting there. He's speaking not good, do you see? Not there. How old is he? <laughs> OK. All right, I'm organising that to help now, OK? Oh, this sounds intense. Ash and Keely are dispatched to the suspected stroke. They're five minutes away. 55-year-old male, query stroke, not coherent, speech not good. 55, like, yeah, it's pretty young. It's pretty young. I only recently became a qualified paramedic. This job is just constantly learning. You're always learning. You've got to be very open-minded and willing to take in a lot in this job. So it's just like a time thing, pretty yeah. much. Hey, just get him in the car as quickly as possible. Yeah. It is a very fast paced when you're going to a stroke. I've seen people deteriorate quite quickly. They've started facial droop and slow speech, and then they've gone completely incomprehensible, or they can't move at all. We can't fix it. Got to get into hospital. Best thing you do is call us, get, let us get you there quickly. More than 50,000 Australians suffer a stroke each year. They can occur when blood supply to the brain is blocked, often due to a clot or burst blood vessel. Without immediate medical attention, 
the consequences can be devastating. It's in here. It's at like a workplace. It says it's this one here. Cool. Thank you. Hi, guys. So, um, where are we? A private party. Oh. So what's this party for? No, it's not a workplace. Can we turn the lights on? No, I'd like the lights on. When you go to someone where it's very dark and a lot of people everywhere, it can be quite scary. I'm not going to come in until the lights are turned on. Ash, I'm not going in without you. Don't go in yet. I have to think about myself and I have to think about my partner and I'm not coming into a room where I can't see what I'm doing. I can't see if I'm going to step on someone. I can't see if anyone has a weapon. I can't see anything. Can we just maybe get, like, everyone just over there so I can assess the patient who's having a query stroke? I do have thoughts of, oh, I need to get to that patient, but I can't look after a patient if I can't look after myself or my partner. No, sorry, we'll back out until you guys can figure it out. Do you want police assistance help? Hi, guys. So, um, where are we? A private party? Yeah. Oh. Paramedics Keely and Ash have been dispatched to a man having a suspected stroke at what appears to be a private party. It's not a workplace. I walk in and it's very dark. There was a lot of people everywhere in leather and straps. Oh, I know what this place is. I want a sex dungeon. There's a big sex party. Um, walking into that environment, it was a very weird environment. It was my first time being in a room like that. And then I just click and I'm like, I do have a job to do. Can we just maybe get like everyone just over there so I can assess the patient who's having a query stroke? Excuse me. Hello. Hi, my friend. My name's Keely, and Ashley's here. We're two paramedics. Grab my hands. Grab them, squeeze them. Perfect. Let go. Close your eyes. Raise your arms up. Raise them down. As Keely performs a stroke assessment, the source of his symptoms isn't clear. Are you in any pain anywhere? No. You don't? Why have we been called today? No. We treat what we see. I rule out that anything life-threatening right now is happening. He's not yeah. fast positive. He's not having a stroke. No, he's he's high. Yeah. Do you, do you see the size of his pupils? Yeah. Okay, mate. You're not in trouble, but you need to tell me if you've had some drugs. No. no. You haven't. You haven't had any drugs at all. I had no drugs. How much alcohol have you had? I drank two beers and uh, a bottle of vodka. So something's going on. He doesn't look like he's got capacity at the moment, so we're taking him. He's got no choice. Because the patient is showing signs of intoxication, he doesn't have competency. He's required to go to hospital in case his outward condition is disguising further problems. All right, my friend. Right. Am I free to go? No, we're taking you to hospital. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, so... I can't wait. <laughs> go up to hospital. Uh, yeah. Have you had any drugs? No. No? <laughs> I just drank a bottle of vodka. You told me that you had a bottle of vodka and some beers. Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah. And some other stuff. No, You're going back and forth between all these stories, my friend, but I'm not uh, liking it. No, I had a bottle of vodka and, um, I said half a bottle of vodka right there. Mm-hmm. Half. Half a bottle of vodka. Yeah. Both. 
They stole it. Who stole your vodka? Vodka's getting expensive. When someone's intoxicated, I just kind of talk with them. If you create good banter with the patient, they're going to be more likely to answer your questions. People who are intoxicated can go downhill quite quick, especially if something else is going on. Can you tell me about the party? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh... Yeah, it looked pretty groovy in there. Yeah. Pretty groovy outfits. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. I love it. I like the lighting, the atmosphere. Stunning atmosphere. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Cross to you, bro. Yeah. Good on you. I'm not going to judge anyone. Like, I need to make people feel comfortable. Each to their own. <laughs> not my vibe. And my vibe. And that's what. Ask me out! Oh, no! <laughs> There's no way I'm going on a date with you, my friend. Oh, four. <laughs> Triple zero is my number! <laughs> So, 04? I think we should just lock the phone and let's lock, lock. Good job, my friend. <gasps> oh. oh, my God. That was very unexpected. I walked in and I was like, <gasps> it was so dark. Like, we were in Navy and we were the lightest thing in there. <laughs> He was persistent. You did so well to, like, Ash just... He's only human. He's Let's only be human. <laughs> Let's be honest. I'm not kidding. Oh, so funny. <laughs> I'm so prone to, like, stupid injuries now, because I'm old. You're old. You're not that old. I'm, I'm old. What, you hit 50? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm scared. <laughs> Why? I don't know. I just hope like I'm a healthy 50-year-old. You know, like J-Lo 50-year-old? Like that's, yeah. that's good. <laughs> that's like goals, right? The favourite thing about being a paramedic is you have the biggest adventure. No two jobs are the same. And if you have the right partner, it's just the best fun. <gasps> Look, there's a pony! That's actually a Shetland pony! <laughs> Wait, it's your dog! It's, it's your dog! <laughs> it's, a, it's an actual pony! What? Who has a pony in Merrickville? It's all about the vibes. You know, if we have good vibes, we're gonna have a good shift. Ambulance emergency, what town or suburb? Homebush. Okay, tell me exactly what happened. So, the last night I was feeling sick, saying what I was seeing, watching TV. Okay. When I uh, get depressed, yeah, I feel very stabbing, sharp pain on my chest. So, does it hurt to breathe? Yes. So, I'm organising help for you now. Stay on the line and I'll tell you exactly what to do next. All right, we're going to a 62-year-old male. Uh, he's got chest pain. It's worse on breathing. <laughs> He's had surgery about two weeks ago. Paramedics Demi and Harry are about 10 minutes from the patient. He's got chest pain, which is, you know, always a concern. With chest pain, every second counts because things can change really quick. Potentially, they might go into cardiac arrest. Anyone who's had, like, surgery in the last little bit, there's potential to, like, throw a clot, you know what I mean? That can block any, anywhere in the body. Any patient who's had recent surgery, there's a very high risk of clots forming. And if that happens to clot in the heart, that's the perfect storm for having that heart attack. Haverfield paramedics Demi and Harry are responding to a man experiencing chest pain in Sydney's inner west. So, you've had this chest pain since 8 o'clock last night, is yeah. that right? And I, um, 
was watching TV, I sat down there. Mm -hmm. Not the same thing, mate. So I, I thought that I had some stumble. It wasn't going away. Mm -hmm. Especially when I was trying to yawn or I get the pain. Uh, pain. I was feeling pain. Yeah. Right now, do you have the pain? Oh, yes. yes. Sharp pain. Yes. Okay. What about anywhere here? If no. I touch pain. Yeah, that's it. That's pain. On the, touch on the pain. Rib, on top of my rib. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We'll have a look at your heart. Have you had any heart problems in the past? No. No. Okay. Cool. I'm gonna do an ECG yeah, on you. Yeah. Is that okay? That's okay. Yeah. NASA has had recent chest surgery unrelated to heart problems. It may or may not be related to your surgery, but we'll do a full checkup. There's so many different reasons why someone might be having chest pain. They could be having pains in their lungs from coughing too much, could be anxiety. It really could be anything. All right, so nice and still, arms by your side. We'll have a quick look at your heart. Very good. Oh, too scary. It's good. All the obs are between the flags. Yeah. Thank you. Despite NASA's chest pain and his recent surgery, there are no obvious signs of a heart attack. But as a precaution, the paramedics will transfer him to hospital. In our job, it's always about preparing for the worst, and it's always a relief when their vitals are all between the flags. Oh, no way! There's a rabbit! Oh, my goodness! <laughs> I didn't even see the rabbit. What's its name? I haven't named him because it's just a fostering period. I don't want to get too attached. Oh. Yeah. Demi. I reckon Demi. Demi. Do you want to hug? Oh, my gosh, yes! <laughs> yes! Absolutely! Oh, my God, look at this little mouse. Yeah. Oh, my... Can you please keep him? Yes. Do you want to take him? You love him that much. I can't. I've got a cat and a dog. Uh, yeah, I think you can make it work. Crazy. Being a paramedic is hard. It can be really, really hard. Things can get heavy real quick. So you just got to keep it light. Thank you so much. No Thank you, NASA. And maybe we could make him a station pet. <gasps> Stop. <laughs> oh, my gosh. OK, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Let's go. Happy? Yeah, happy. Thank you. So why don't you want to keep the rabbit? She's not working full time. She's not working full time. Oh, the rabbit's she, alone? She pulls everywhere and then chews everything. Chews the other day, he sneaked in and then he was chewing the TV cord. <gasps> oh, no. Dangerous. You know? Dangerous, yeah. you're right. For that rabbit, it's okay. You have to keep it. It's just the adventures. I really, really love that you don't know what you're going to be going to today. Occasionally, you save lives. <laughs> or you've just helped make someone's day better. <laughs> How cute is the rabbit? Happy Easter to me. <laughs> so cute. Next time, a tunnel emergency. There's not a lot of protection when you come off a motorbike, and the road is very hard when they hit it. Yeah, what are you on? Can you talk to me nicely? A difficult extraction. Come on, come on. And got a hard head then. The unbreakable twosome. How many years married have you been? 67. What's the secret? We're married. We need some advice.